Okay, so it's uh it's eight o'clock. Um, I want to get this started up um, because we have to check out here in a minute. But the person that I that I really wanted to hang out for, let me let me text him real fast. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk shortly about um, a couple of things. I want to detail a, a trade that, that a lot of us took last week. Uh, I want to talk about the Judas swing, and then uh, I want to talk about some simple trades that we can execute like uh, every Sunday and, and get paid from it, okay? Then we'll go into, we'll do a couple of chart markups. I think a couple of people wanted to mark up some charts. So uh, the trade that, that I wanted to, uh, I guess, discuss was this GA trade that uh, se several of us took last week. So I want you to notice that uh, I took the trade, I posted the trade idea, and uh, I took the trade based off of this setup on the weekly chart, okay? So uh, just off rip, you know, uh, whenever I post a trade idea, it will always be a swing trade. I don't think anybody should ever be confused that it will always be a swing trade, okay? Um, this particular trade that, that we took last week, we talked about it pushing down first back into the order block and then pushing away from the order block, okay? I have this trade going all the way up to this level, which is about uh, 196.96, okay? So when we got into this trade on a Sunday, when the market opened, the trade pushed down exactly as we thought. You know, it took about two days for this trade to push down into the order block, uh, at which point this red line is where I took profit on my, my sale trade and I entered or a buy trade. Notice that this wick goes a little bit further down, okay? When I entered this trade for my buy trade, I had to protect, with, when I say protect, I mean, I would have entered, um, let's say a stop loss for you, but I, I don't use stop loss. So I used a sell stop. I placed a sell stop right here and I entered the trade for a buy and I immediately went into drawdown. Okay, I don't remember how far in drawdown it was. It doesn't matter to me because I risk 1% per trade. And if I had lost this trade for you, or if it had drew me down all the way to my sales stop, I would be down 1%. Okay, I don't remember the dollar figure, you know. But um, when I went and draw down, I had a few people um, that hit the panic button. And I was trying to explain to them <laughs> to you know, relax and allow this trade to play out, okay? Um, there's a concept that, that I used or, or a term that I used that people weren't familiar with, and it's called the Judas swing, okay? I posted this in education. So I got this concept from ICT. Um, I study a lot of ICT stuff because I appreciate that he doesn't give trades and he doesn't give you uh, the, the, the details. He gives you the concept, the framework, and you have to kind of understand or you have to fit the pieces into that framework, okay? And trading is, is very abstract, okay? Um, it's not a detailed thing. Like nobody's going to give you the detailed version of what you need to do, okay? I can give you the detailed version of what I do. And if you duplicate it, you can make money. But it doesn't mean that you're comfortable swing trading. It doesn't mean that you're comfortable using the lot sizes that I use. It doesn't mean that you're comfortable um, being in trades while news is out. All of these things, you're gonna have to kind of tailor to yourself, okay? I can tell you that I'm successful doing it. I can post my profits, that's all. That's all I can do. Um, so it's up to you 
to decide what type of trader you're going to do, you're going to be, and what type of style that you're going to employ in the market to make you profitable. Okay. But um, I can assure you that if you are taking my trade idea and you trade it the way I trade it, you won't lose very many trades. Okay. Um, so in this particular trade, that trade sold down into the order block. All right. Once it hit the order block, it went back up. Um, that's called a Judas swing. Okay. So the definition of the Judas swing, I'm going to let it sit on your screen. You can read what it means. Uh, he even gives you the time frame uh, that you'll see this. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the time frame that we could have expected uh, that market to, to reverse was probably in the wee hours of the morning. It would happen in between Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. And that happened Tuesday night. Okay. The, the market started going up Tuesday night. So that means Sunday, at least it's Sunday over here. It, it would be Monday in Sydney, but Sunday here in the United States, I entered that, that trade for GA. And I sold it from Sunday, uh, Monday, and then Tuesday night is when I switched it up, all right? When I got out of my sale, I closed my sale out in profit and I got into the buy, okay? So I probably made about 25 or 2,600 bucks in the sale. And then I flipped over for the buy, okay? There's a few different ways you can do it. So can you mute your phone, please? Or can you, can you guys mute your, your mics? So there's a few different ways that you can do this, okay? You can close out of your sale trade or you can open up a buy trade for double the lot size to buy up. It doesn't matter to me, all right? Um, it, 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 you guys have to figure out the details of the way you're going to trade. All right. Either way you look at it, this is called hedging. We're selling the trade down because we know it's going to buy up. It's called hedging. So you hedge the way you hedge, whether you have one open position down and then you buy it going back up, you eventually close the open position going down at some point, whatever it's called hedging. Okay, um, so you can sell it down and open up a buy just like I did and you can go and draw down. You shouldn't be worried because you just made 2,600 bucks going down. So however you want to come up, come, um, however you want to employ that concept, you have to employ it and you have to make it, uh, you have to make it comfortable for yourself, right? Um, if you just made X number of dollars coming down and you go and draw down a fraction of that, then you should still, in my opinion, you should be comfortable with that. You're just in drawdown for a little bit. And then the trade took off. And if you held that trade until Friday, like me, um, like a few other people that I know, you came out still smelling like roses. Now, um, I, have, I trade a prop account, so I can't hold my trades over the weekend. But if you trade a personal account, you could have very, very well held that trade because it's going to keep going up. Um, it's going to go up over time. That's a weekly chart we looked at. So it, that trade will push up. Uh, it will have some, some pullback days. Just understand that this is a swing trade. This is what happens during swing trades. It goes up, it pulls back. It goes up, it pulls back. But it's still going to go, it's going to matriculate to the, to the top of that range, okay? So this is what we call a Judas swing. And what you guys experienced what, when, you, when, uh, when it switched if that was on a lower time frame, a lot of people would have got caught up uh, selling that thing because they would have thought it was going to sell. And then all of a sudden it switches directions. That's called a Judas swing. And you got caught in a Judas swing um, when that thing switched over on Tuesday night. That's what a Judas swing is like on a swing trade. OK, you just have to understand those concepts. And once you understand those concepts, you use that against the market. All right. You use that to your advantage in the market. So let's go back and look at this trade. I'm going to put it in, re in reflect. I'm going to take away the whole week worth of action. So this is what we looked at. This is exactly what this trade looked like. This is exactly what I did. I put a Fibonacci. I went from, I went from the low, the wick of this candle to the top wick of the candle, right? Y'all see that? It gave me my golden zone. I put this box 
in my golden zone. And for me personally, for me personally, I knew I was good to sell this for 175 pips. You see that? I personally knew. Now, you as a trader, you have to determine, you know, how far you can take this down or whatever. But me personally, I was very comfortable selling this for 175 pips. Now, because I was expecting this Judas swing, I got my butt up in the middle of the night and I sold it, sold it, sold it. Once it passed my range and passed this area, I put my stop loss. The first time I used a stop loss right here, I, I put a stop loss here. And eventually I went back to sleep. So eventually it came back and hit my stop loss. And uh, when I woke up, I put my buy order in and then that's when I went and draw down, okay? But by the end of the week, you see where the trade ended up being. Um, it ended up driving back up, just like we thought it was gonna do. So armed with this knowledge, okay? Armed with this knowledge, I want to talk about some easy money trades, okay? I talked to a few people about the same thing uh, this week, okay? So let's look. Hey, Todd, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Are you about to move on? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Terrence. I was going to ask. So, yeah, I was one of those people that was panicking, uh, but it was because I had my weekly order block, I think, in the wrong spot. So can you show before you leave um, just a quick fr framing yeah, because I think your confidence came from that, but you also knew it wasn't going to bleed all the way through that order block. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the order block here, guys. Um, we're going to, we're going to, I'll get into framing when we, when we actually do the chart markup. Okay. I just okay. want to talk about identifying this order block right now. Um, the order black is right here. This red candle, then the green candle next to it that broke structure to the upside. Okay. That tells me that this is a bullish order black. These two candles. Once I see this, before this candle is even formed, all right, I'm going to put my box, right, this rectangle right here, I'm going to take it and frame this order block. And what I'm going to do here, I can right click this level, and I can add an alert that tells me, hey, price is tapping into this order block, right? See, it says crossing whatever the price that I right click. Uh, and I can just give myself a brief description in case this goes off in the middle of the night. I can say price crossing into OB. And I can say, buy it. A lot of people say that's not how you say buy, but just for me, okay, that's how I say it. Buy, right? So I know if I wake up in the middle of the night, I can just jump in there. I can market buy it. I can have a sell, uh, a buy limit set here for when the market comes down. But I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm always going to trade this thing down here. I'm not going to watch 175 pips. I'm not going to wait for it to come to me. That's, that's, that's not very smart in my opinion, okay? If this thing has to travel 175 pips to get to me, I'm selling it. So I, you can set your alarm, you know, and in my case, I don't need to set a guide dog alarm because I'm selling this thing, but you can set your alarm here that says buy it. And then once your alarm goes off, you wake up, you tap your phone, boom, buy it. And then you just wait, you just wait. This is the easiest, <laughs> like y'all can go live your lives. Y'all got lives and families and kids friends, go, go do that. Go be with those guys. This is going to do what it does. I mean, and this order block is, is your insurance policy. That is going to do what it does. Now, is it possible that you get wicked out? It is. We're all going to lose some trades, but it's 1%, right? It's 1%. And, you know, honestly, your win rate is going to be so high that you're not going to, you're not going to miss um, out on this a lot. Um, th these trades, they work, they happen. They happen every week and they happen all the time. And I, I'm going to show you that, okay? Um, I can show you five or six from last week that if you had only made the, the move on a Sunday and sold these, you could have made 500 pips and did absolutely nothing. On Sunday, you could have clicked sell 
in five different trades once the spreads went down and you would be filthy. I mean, you, you can get filthy rich doing this. Just doing one thing. You don't even have to understand order block. You can just say, okay, I'm going to sell this retracement. I, I did it for months whenever I first started. When I first learned how to trade, all I did was trade retracements. And hey, I, one, one more question before you move uh, on. So you buy immediately when it hits the order block? Are you in buy mode then? Well, if you're not really? watching it. So listen, if you're watching it, Terrence, you're going to watch, you can drop down. You're not going to watch it on a weekly. You're going to drop down maybe to the 15 minute or the five minute to see rejection and what? A break of structure. Once you get that rejection and a break of structure to the upside, hop in it. That's gotcha. your cue to buy. It's always going to be rejection and break of structure. That's your cue to take the, the trade the opposite direction. But a lot of times, okay, and especially when you when your confidence grows, you're not going to be interested in getting up at two in the morning. Well, see, that's where I got, I got, so I, I did the sale down to right there, but then I, um, I bought it immediately. I didn't, I didn't uh, understand the right, wait for the okay. construction part. Yes. So that, that's it guys. And listen, experience is the best teacher, right? Um, at the end of the day, you, you made money on it. I know you did, right? Yeah, I did. And maybe you could have made more if you had had the experience or, or if you understood so experience is our best teacher. And, and you got to understand, this is a weekly chart. I don't know very many traders who trade off the weekly chart. You know, um, I may be one of the few, but I'm probably very, I'm probably a lot more successful than a lot of people because weekly charts don't fool you, man. Like they tell the truth. Those other charts, they get ran through by the higher time frames. So if, if this weekly chart says it's buying, Trust me, I don't care what that 15 minute chart said through here. It got, it, it bought. The 15 minute chart could have told you it was a sale until this weekly chart said, no, we're buying. So that's the benefit of trading on the higher time frames. And a lot of people, oh, you a lot of people make, oh, you oh, I didn't know. Hey, can, can you uh, mute your phone, please? Or mute your, your mic. But a lot of people make oh, the mistake. They're looking for inside. Oh. A lot of people make the mistake. Um, Oh. And they feel like they feel like um, this in these higher time frame it takes too long, and that's not true. The higher time frame you get paid faster or or just as fast as the lowest time frame. You just have to understand how you're going to place your trades. Okay, uh, I placed one position going down. I I could have stuck. I could have stacked my positions, and I traced. I placed. One position going up. Now I got in a couple of other, a couple of other uh, uh, trades, but you only need one trade, guys. This is 175 pips coming down in one position. So if you had two positions, that's double that pip count. I don't know how many how many uh, pips it takes for you to live your life, but you can figure it out. And you could have gotten that trade, and you you would have been you'd have had a great week. So my point here is. Understand the, the concept, right, uh, and, and the construct of the trade. And then you can take your, your style and you can, uh, you can figure it out. So do I have any other, uh, I guess, comments or, or questions about this particular setup? Okay. So I want to take you... Um, into this week. So there was another setup that uh that we talked about uh, that uh, I I put into the chat, man. Like on the twentieth, right? The twentieth of uh, y'all the the people who were who were with me remember us talking about this move on the twentieth of uh of January. Right. So what it happened was we saw this low, these lows, these swing lows on the daily chart get taken out. And um, I dropped a case study in the chat that said that this market was going to explode to the upside. And it was based, again, off of IT, ICT concept that uh, whenever they're going to move the market, they're going to take out these temporary or these protected 
uh, highs, right? If they want to move the market down, they're going to take out the highs. If they want to move the market up, they got to take out the lows to grab liquidity and shoot the market up. I know Stephanie traded this up. Um, I traded it up. I didn't catch as many pips as, as Stephanie catches, but um, a lot of that is due to me trading um, a prop account where I can't get into these trades on the weekend. But the concept is there and the concept is strong. If you see the swing highs and swing lows get taken out, you know you're going to eat. It, the market is going to head the other direction. So what does that mean for me and you today, right? We can be jealous of Stephanie for catching 500 pips or we can frame our own plan, right? Does, doesn't this look eerily familiar? Like the same thing we, we just looked at for, for the GA from last week. So if you're following what I'm putting down, you just throw your fib on here. Again, from this wick to the upper wick, I drop my zone, right? So me personally, I'm comfortable with selling to this zone, right? I'm, I'm not gonna wake up in the middle of the night um, if it gets to this zone, it's probably going to take a couple of days, maybe. That's that's 195 pips. Some of y'all don't catch 195 pips in two weeks. This is 100, 199, 195 pips. Hey, Ty. Yes, ma'am. Why did you um, use the fit? I didn't see you go all the way to the bottom of that red candle, that red wick, or did you? So I'm not interested in this red candle. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, when you oh. put you pulled out the fib too. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this green candle. Okay, so the fib you're using on the green candle, not the red. Right, and do you okay. understand why? For, for everybody who doesn't understand why, let me explain this to you. So if you look at this red, this is a whole week of action, right? This, this is a whole week. I'm not interested in what happened last week or, or the week this is last week, but the week before last, I'm not interested in, okay? But for, for those of you who've been with me for a while, we talk about price action, was healthy price action, was not healthy, okay? I want you to look at this wick on this side. I'm gonna put a horizontal ray through the top of this wick, right? Y'all see that? There's a horizontal ray. If you understand healthy price action, what should happen? When this next candle open, it's got to come. It's got to retrace. Okay, Brianna, you're, you're right. Go ahead, say, say it again, Brianna. Should retrace. Where should it retrace to? To the the golden zone. It should it should retrace to this green line. It should meet the top of this wick. Y'all understand that? Does everybody understand that? Yes. Yes. If you don't understand, drop a two in the chat. These are, these are nuggets that, that will pay you for the rest of your, of your life. All you have to do is understand the concept of what I'm telling you. Okay, Loren. In order for you to have healthy price action in the market, you have to look at a three candle series. Okay? So we're going to look at some, this is called unhealthy price action, okay? Unhealthy price action happens when the market expands at a great pace, right? So it rapidly pushed down right here. So what you should have is, you see this wick right here? These wicks, between this wick right here and this wick, they should, price should meet. So this is what it should look like. This is what this trade should look like. Either this wick has to come down here and then you wanna see this wick come up here. That's a good healthy price action. But when you don't get that, you get what we call fair market value gaps or imbalances, okay? And then when you get imbalances like this, you understand as a trader that at some point, this market has to come back up and fill these imbalances, right? This price, buyers have to be able to participate the same way. So, 
Okay, good. You see, so that's what you're looking for. The, that's the advantage that you have as a trader over the market, right? It's not very many advantages, advantages that we get. So when the market gives us the advantage, then we have to take advantage of it. What's up, Terrence? Hey, so the only difference I see between this and last week, mm -hmm. um, well, the last pair you had mm -hmm. is the top of this last candle, this, this green candle was actually hitting some form of resistance, but this time it's not. So how do you know it's going to come whoa, back whoa, whoa. What do you mean it's not? I don't see a line of, what is that? I don't see a resistance. You mean right here? Yeah, I don't see any resistance so, there. So let, let me explain something to you, T. I guarantee we're on a weekly time frame. Yeah. There are lots of time frames below here. I guarantee you, whether it's the four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute, you're going to find the order block, buddy. Price, price is not just going to stop. It, it's either reacting to an order block or an imbalance. Gotcha. Every and time. You know, you know that based on these, I mean, just looking at this, you know that based on the cameras to the left. Well, you can look to the left, but you, you're still going to have to drop down, right? Like you can look to the left and, and there's a wick. So we know that there's at least a green and a red candle here. Well, I was thinking show further him. to the left, but show I was thinking here. Yeah. Show him that would be better because the, sometimes people need a visual to see. Well, I, I, well, I don't want to get off base. I don't want to, I don't want to run uh, this into the ground. Okay. But, I, I want I want to I want people to understand that if you drop down time frames, right? If we drop down to several different time frames, there are order blocks or or an imbalance that this is reacting to. We we see the imbalance here, right? We you know that there's an imbalance that got filled right here. This this wick right here filled and filled this imbalance, right? You see that? Am I making sense right here? Tim? Yeah, 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 totally. So there was an imbalance right here. When this price pushed up halfway, it was considered closed, right? When this price pushed up here, this imbalance is considered filled. So the order block that this price is reacting to is in this wick. And all we have to do is drop down time frames, and we'll find the order block that this candle stopped at, right? But gotcha. all of that is, is not material to what I'm trying to show you about these easy money moves, okay? That's getting deeper than I want, than I even care to get into about. This is, what I want to talk about now is your easy money move. Every weekend, every weekend, we can expect a retracement on these candles, right? So every, all these moves that are made during the week, the next week, we can, we can expect a retracement. Do we always get it? No, it's like, like in this case, that's the small retracement price pushed up, right? You would have lost if you tried a retracement trade on this on this candle. But the reason why you lose is because the market is expanding down at a rapid pace, all right? We got a, a huge push up here. We might not get a re retracement all the way back to the bottom, right? But I'm going to trade it anyway. That's what I do. I think all of the euro got exploded up. I think all of it's gonna gonna um, pull down. So I think any Euro trade, Euro Chef, Euro USD, Euro CAD, they're all in for retracement. So I use the Fib on one candle, this weekly candle, and this is my golden zone. It makes sense because it lines up with healthy price action. All right. So I expect for this market to push. It might not push all 190 pips, right? But it. It's, it's not going to push for, for two seconds and then push up, right? These are This is a weekly candle. So if it pushes 60 pips and change directions, I'll see it because it'll be Sunday night, right? So these are, are easy moves that you can make your money on in the first two days of the week. This is, this is low-hanging fruit, right? It doesn't even have to push all the way to this order block, even though I want to frame my order block, right? At the end of the day, we expect these order blocks to be tapped into and we expect price to move away from them, all right? That's the basic of all these moves. If you if you frame this order block, the next candle taps into that order block 
and falls away. So I expect the same action, right? But even if the price doesn't get all the way to the bottom of this order block, maybe it'll tap me in right here, right? I can sell it down right here. Either way, I'm selling it. I'm selling this. That's a no-brainer. Does everybody understand that? Is there? <laughs> um, wow, this thing is moving right along, right? Right where I predicted it to go. I'm trading right, it. Thank you. But this is the same sort of thing, right? This was TP1, smashed. TP2, smashed. Now we're getting the pullback. So all I want to do, let me delete this. Let me delete all this stuff. Delete, delete. I'm only interested in this one candle, right? I want to see where this candle is going to pull back to. So I go from the bottom wick to the top wick to get my pullbacks on. So what this is telling me is this price should pull back to my golden zone, right? Let me see how many pips that is. Ninety-eight pips, maybe a hundred pips to my golden zone. Maybe it pushes further down. The point is, it's going to push to this area. That's, a, that's another hundred pips. Now, when I drop down to the daily, it's probably an order block down here. See that order block? Mm -hmm. We haven't even tapped into it. But this is probably the area that price is trying to come back and tap into. I'm here for it. I'm going to sell it down. Right? I'm going to sell this down at least to this area. That's another 100 pips. So if I just take that EC trade and the GC trade, I'm at 300 pips. That's before I've, I've that's before, <laughs> before I've actually tried to frame this order block and take it, take it to this next level, right? That's before I put my buy trade in to take this to the next level. Why is why is the the uh, the British pound going up? Interest rates. Interest rate. Interest rate. Why is the CAD such an easy target? Y'all, did y'all see the CAD news Friday? Here it is, right here. They missed their numbers are, are crap. Easy target, low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit. I want the easy trade, guys. I don't, I don't want to have to work for my money. I, I want my money to just come. And this is a great example of low-hanging fruit. Take what's easy. That's 300 pips on the way down. And then whatever it gives me, like I'm sure it probably won't make it up to this level in one week. Or if it does, that's, that's great. But uh, <laughs> it, it's probably going to work, it, work its way up there. But and what's, I, that, what's that link you just looked at for that information? It's a Forex factory. Gotcha. Okay, there, there are, listen, it, we can go to countless, countless other pairs, man. Like, like we haven't even hit GJ and, and, and the, the, uh, the, the USD pairs. Let me see, GBP, JPY. We can go to countless other pairs and get re retracement sale. Like I can, I can put my fib from, from the bottom to the top and find out where this is pulling back to, right? Um, countless other pair, man. Like this go on and on. Maybe, the, maybe this candle, it, maybe it's not worth me trading this particular one, right? Um, NZD USD though, NZD USD. I think they, they had a pretty, a pretty decent candle. Okay. This was the move I had plotted for last week. It's still going to happen. It did exactly what I thought it was going to do. It came up and now it's selling down. So I'm going to sell this down to this level. So all you have to do is find your low hanging fruit, man, and, and take the trade. Easy money. It's, it's 
kind of a, a, an afterthought. I mean, it's going to retrace. They, these, these, the pairs have to retrace. So if you had sold this, um, if you had bought this pair based off of this retracement last week, you would have got paid. One hundred and thirty-five, one hundred and forty pips. See that? All based off of just one move. Not, not that you expected this to hit an order block or anything. You're just trying to plot the freaking retracement. These are easy money trades. These are trades that you don't really have to think about. These are trades that you don't have to find a setup to. Your only thing you're doing is plotting these retracements and you collecting the pips. Oh, there are hundreds of pips. Hundreds. Um, and then as you get stronger in your understanding of the market in order blocks and whatnot, you can move on to the next level. But if you're struggling to find pips, if you're struggling to find profits, <laughs> this is it, man. This is it. This is all you need to be a successful trader. So you wait for your weekly candle to close on Friday and then do the fib tracement. Enter in on Sunday. Yes. Yes, Evelyn. Yes. Um, as soon as the spreads subside on Sunday, I'm in the trade. Um, and I normally protect the bottom of the trade. When I, what, do I, what do I mean by protect? You guys use stop losses. I use, in this case, I would use a sell stop. All right. Because I don't want to get wicked out. If the candle opens up and pushes down a little bit before it, it retraces, I don't want the trade to take me out. I'll, I'll have, I'll be in a hedge position and then I'll just cut the hedge off once it starts moving in my direction. Um, a lot of you guys don't hedge, but if you want to be um, successful, more successful, you'll learn to hedge. Trust me, it's worth it. It's, it's worth the learning experience. Hey, Ty, what, what, what do you mean by the spread on Sunday? So, um, when the market opens and when it closes, like during the week at, at, uh, at five o'clock, I guess, New York time, they, if you're ever in a position, you'll, you'll notice that you'll go red or, or it'll suck, suck down your profits, right? Because they open the spread. Like the spread is just the difference between where you can buy it and where you can sell it. Right. They open that number up. And um, it's not wise for you. To, if you enter a position, you know, like, a two lot position where maybe it would normally cost you two or three bucks. It might cost you 20 or 30 bucks. So, so you wait till what time? Uh, it, it, the spreads normally fall about an hour after the market. Opens, okay. I like to tell people if you're going to get in the market, get in at 1805 or, after, you know, after 1805, it'll normally fall. Now the, the, uh, the JPY pairs may fall a little bit earlier because that's their session or AUD. But you just, all you have to do is watch on your phone or, or wherever you're trading, your trading platform. And once that, once the spread goes below, let's say 30, then then, uh, then you should be good to go. I don't know. It just depends on your broker. Who do you use as a broker? Osprey. Okay. Yeah. Once they drop below 30, um, you should be good to go. The, the, uh, the USD pairs, you want them probably below 10, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, does your hedge position have a stop loss? No. Uh, I, for, for me, no. Okay. I use a buy, a buy stop or a sell stop, depending on which, which side I'm protecting. All right. If it's a a trade that's going to buy that I expect to buy. Once I enter the trade, I put a sell stop somewhere below whatever your stop loss is. Let's say it's 15 pips. My sell stop goes 15 pips. So if that trade drops 16 pips, it picks my sell stop order. And now I have a tail. So basically that just locks me in. I don't win or lose anything until I cut one of those ends off. So once it starts going in my direction, I slowly cut off the, uh, the sales stop. I don't do it all at once. I don't go in and cut it all off at once, okay? I cut it off little by little. And, you know, it, it's really, it doesn't matter if you got 100 pips to go, man, you can use 20 pips to cut off the, uh, the hedge, okay? You're still going to make a lot of money. I don't want y'all to get greedy. 
and get caught up with how much money you can make, okay? I want you to execute the concept. Once you can execute the concept, man, we can talk about all kinds of ways to make triple or double the money. Because if you can execute the concept, then I can show you how to go in and add positions at lower time frames that with better risk to reward ratio. So the, uh, the idea is to recognize the setup. All right, you recognize the setup because every week y'all do analysis, right? But most people never even look at the weekly. Come in here, look at the weekly, find your retracement. That week, is, it's gotta, it has to retrace that week in order to form this candle. And you have to understand the way price moves, right? Price mo almost never just goes straight to the direction it's going, all right? It's always going to pull back and then go that direction. That's called the Judas swing. They have to do it like that because they have to make money. They can't make money if they don't entice people into doing what they want them to do. You guys understand that? Anybody need any further explanation about that? I don't even see her. She's like younger than she do the design. What's I think her name's out with a T. Chanel. Is it yeah? Is she coming into it? I don't know. I just walked All right. in. So, so what I want to do now is I, uh, I get who asked. Hey, you might have to do it, Todd. What's that? Okay. Ain't you mute her? You the uh, host? Yeah, yeah, her? I can. Um. What I want to do now is uh, I want to get some some people who are gonna mark the charts up. Y'all say y'all wanted to do that last week. Um, I think we got a couple of people to do it last week. Is there anybody who wants to uh, to frame a trade and then I guess do an analysis on on where it's going? Nobody. Evelyn said yes. Okay, Evelyn. Um, I'll do one after her. Oh, Elfie, that's that's awesome. So you want to watch? You want to watch? You want to do it first? You want to do it first, Elfie? Um, no, I I just I still don't feel confident. So I just I just want to watch for so, now. Okay, Elfie, do you want to do it? You want to do it first? <laughs> Why don't you? Um, I'm going to give you host, Elfie. Hey, can can you mute your phone? I, I'm not, or mute your computer, mute your mic. Me? Sweet. Yeah, yeah. No, not you, Elfie. Not you, Elfie. Okay. But uh, I'm going to give you, you're the host, and then I'll stop sharing and you can share your screen. Okay. You guys can see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Right. You should got those. One or can you guys want to pick one? I don't know. No, I want you to pick it. Okay. Let's do this one. Did I do this one already? Weekly. Right. So I see an order block right here. What time frame are we on? We are on the weekly. Why? What do you mean why? why there's, a time frame, there's a time frame above it. On the weekly? I mean, okay. Monthly then. Let's go, EV. Come on, Elfie. <laughs> <laughs> on the spread. Okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, so monthly then, yes? Hmm. 
see, now I'm getting confused because I don't really there see a, an order black over here. So go down. This there you way. go. Okay. Don't you don't have to overthink it. Why is it important to do this? So frame. There you go. You, if you don't know your 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 top or your bottom, then, then you you're gonna be lost in the sauce. You'll be no different than an hour somebody trading off the hour chart with with no clue of what the upper time frames are doing. Okay, this is the monthly. I'm still a little bit confused as to um, the top. Not okay. Wait. Keep going back. This one then. Oh, this one. Right there. There you go. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I should, if I see a small candle, like if it's a doji or something, if I should include. I use I use doji stuff. I remember, but you, when you use the doji, you do, you use the entire wick then as well. Yes, yes? that's that's correct. So this one is monthly top. Okay. So which means this is the range for the there you um, go. for the monthly range. Okay, so now I can go to the weekly. Correct. Here was my order block right here, this one. Weekly. And um, the right, the right, the right. Can that one be? No. no. It's well, so actually, uh, wait, 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 where are you going? You, you got to look in that area. Look, look right above price. This there one. you go. Okay. This is tiny. Yeah. So. Hey, why that didn't, didn't it already break through that? No. No, it did not. No, price didn't break the top of that wick. The wick is really part of the order block there. Yeah. Can you zoom in, Alfie? Sorry. Where did the wick get at, Karen? Better? I'm saying she got wicks going through the top of it. So listen, the, it, it, did it go through the top of that red wick? No. Say what now? It didn't go through the top of that red wick. You're tapping, you're tapping candle. Show the tapping, the, the candle that tapped into the order block. Right there. It didn't go past that, that wick. And now, you would have lost the trade. You would have lost the trade, right? You would have lost that trade because you only protect the body and you use a stop loss. I wouldn't have lost that trade. I would have got wicked in and then it would have fell down and I could have cut mine off. That's why professionals use hedge trades. But y'all can still keep y'all can still lose trade. We all gonna lose, right? You're gonna lose some trades. But that's this is why I chose to learn to hedge versus um, getting being wicked out. Because what I hate the most is uh, predicting the direction of the market and getting wicked out, and then the market goes exactly where I thought it was gonna go. So this is gonna be decisions that you're gonna have to make as the trader, like. There's nothing wrong with not hedging, right? It's nothing wrong with that because you're gonna lose trades just like I lose trades even when I hedge, right? Um, the difference is I, I try to finagle the pips out of the other side, but still, you're gonna lose trades. So I don't want you to get discouraged because you would have lost a trade. It just happens, man. Like, um, and even if you if you had said, this is not the order block and you use the one to the, to the top side, um, this one. there's yeah, there's a possibility you would have lost the trade for that order block that wicked up there, right? You would have still lost the trade before that, the, the trade that, uh, that tapped me in. You see that? What? Okay. You mean this one? Yeah, if you frame that order block and you just use the bodies, that first wick is probably going to wick right out the top of that. 
Todd, I have a question. I'm yeah, sorry to get up with you. Go ahead, Phoebe. Is this a different strategy than what you just showed us on the weekly? Are these two different things? Okay, yeah, it, it is. So let okay. me, So first of all, <laughs> uh, I'm not showing you a strategy, okay? Um, this, this is a concept, right? Um, the difference is the market moves, the, the order block is a, is, a, is a telltale sign of a bank doing business. That's all an order block is, right? So it's not a strategy, right? They, all I'm showing you is how I trade the order block, like how I choose when I enter the order block. I get tapped into that trade on the, I look for the next candle wick to tap me into that trade, right? It either does or it doesn't. And I don't chase the trade. If it doesn't tap me in, I'm on to the next one, right? That's how I trade. It. So it's the concept. The order block is the concept. How the, the, the strategy is what you're going to develop, right? So I did the easy money thing is, is a totally separate deal. And it is a strategy, right? Because that's a way to get money out of the market every week without worrying about an order block. We're not necessarily looking for an order block, order block on the easy money trades, right? That's a strategy um, design in itself just to trade the retracement, all right? I, I had a lot of success trading retracements as a the retail side of trading, not necessarily the smart money side, just the retail side, because the market is gonna, is gonna retrace. So that is a different, that is a, 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 a strategy and this is a concept. Is that- Gotcha. Is that, Okay. Oh yeah, that clears it up. Last okay. question. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I get the concept of the order blocks. Now I'm seeing as she's doing this, she's doing a bottom one and a top one each time she does it. So on the monthly, she's going for the, the low order block and then the top order correct. block. And on the weekly, the low and then the top, correct? Am I tracking? Yes. Okay, do perfect, you know, thank do you. Do you know why we're doing that? Um, to find the range, right? There you go. So okay. as you as you narrow these order blocks down, now you understand where you can make money, right? So sometimes if if I don't if I can't get a hundred pips, I don't want it. It's not worth my headache. It's not worth my my stress because there are other trades that I can frame, and I, it might be a three hundred pip range. So I don't mess around with small range trades. I'm not a scalper, and I don't like to live life on the edge. I want to know where the price is going and I want to be able to trust that the price is going to go there. Okay. So that's why I deal with uh, ranges that, that are bigger than hundred pips. Okay. I'm so tracking. Thank you. I have a question now. Uh -huh. If we would apply what we did in the beginning with the replacement plotting of the weekly, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I'm going to ask you, how would you do that on that candle? I would, well, flip this. So before you do that, Elf, mm -hmm. the fact that that candle is a wick, I mean, it's a lot of it, it's retraced, right? You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead and put the fib on it. Uh -huh. So where would it retrace to? It's retraced past your point, right? You, you understand that? It's already retraced to the 78.6. Oh, right here, yes, okay. I see what you're saying. So in an, in an instant where you have a, a doji candle, it's already retraced. You can't use that strategy on a doji, all right? Now, I don't want to get in the weeds with y'all, so I said these. If you drop down to that daily, you might be able to use a strategy sim similar, but don't worry about that, all right? Don't even worry about that. Okay, so now I have the range for the weekly. There you go. W what is your range? I have about 189 pips. Okay, 189 pips. So in this case, that thing is probably halfway. Um, you have to drop down to the daily though, right? 
Did you already draw your, your order blocks for your daily? I'm about to do I don't them. think you did. Yeah, so that's not a true range then. We got to get the daily. Okay. All right, so daily order block. In, within that range or, yes? Yeah, 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 it has to be. Within that range. You see one right here? Okay. This one. Okay. Bearish order block. Okay. Okay, so this is daily. <clears throat> and this would be the last. Oh, one above it, eh? Oh, this one. Okay. So now this is the range, yes? There you go. And, and what is it? How many pips? Let's see what it is. 50. Okay, that's a lot different than, than your 100. Now, uh -huh. where is this market going? Down. It's going down. So um, you could trade that down, right? Because it's... That daily candle has to retrace. So go ahead and put the fib on the daily. This, this will help the question you just asked me about, about using the fib on that weekly doji. Fib that daily candle. It's a bearish candle. So you go from the top to the bottom, wick the wick. Mark up your golden zone. So here's where we need to have a conversation. I see. Okay. Okay. Now kill that fib. Take the fib away. Wait a minute. Okay. You gonna put GZ? Yeah. <laughs> I got my little color code, so I check it. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole, your whole background color coded. <laughs> okay, guys. So here's the other than the range. Okay, let's pretend that we have a different range here. This would be a great trade setup, in my opinion, right? Because we have a daily order block. We know that this next candle, we expect to do what? To tap us in. Tap us in, right? And and. If it goes to that golden zone, I mean, this this is a perfect setup, right? Um, all we're waiting to do, you could hedge this trade. You can buy it up to that zone. It could tap you in and you can sell it down. It'll be a perfect trade setup. And this happens on a daily range, which would be a quicker trade than your, your weekly setup, right? Maybe this lasts three or four days. Maybe it lasts a whole week if we're lucky. But... This is a faster trade setup than the ones that we've seen on the weekly time frame. Does everybody understand that? So when we talk about trades at our order block, this is how we would like to enter the trade, okay? And then our stop loss, if you're using a stop loss, goes at the top of that candle. I don't use wicks, it's okay if you do. If you wanna put your stop loss at the top wick, that's totally up to you, I don't do that. I put my, my uh, buy stop right where she has her, her line on that box. And right. I live with my results. If it taps me in, 
Like if it retraces and it taps my buy stop, I don't ever mind that. All right, because I'm a thousand percent sure that this trade is going to move in my direction. And all I have to do is cut it off. Okay. So this would be a great setup for a daily trade for me if the range was bigger. The range is too small for me. Now, I personally think that we're going to break through that daily, that daily um, order block. And I think we will go to that weekly order block. But I'm not a gambling person like that. I, it, there are too many easy trades to jump into, right? I'm not hard up to try to get these 50 pips when I know that I can go and look at another pair and it will easily give me a, a larger range, okay? Uh, if you look at EU or GU, a lot easier, man. I mean, those are easy setups. And I think EU is going to the upside and I think GU is going to the downside, which is kind of confusing, but um, it is what it is. Those trades to me are, are easier trades with, with a broader range than, uh, than that trade. But uh, that you or somebody else or I don't know. Yeah, yeah, somebody else can uh, okay, can, can break down a different one. I, I appreciate it. Did, did you have any questions? Not right now. Thank you. Let me see how. Where do I go to um do the host thing? At. Oh, are, are you driving? I'm not driving. Are you? Uh, do you have your laptop? Oh, I'm in the car. Well, that's, <laughs> shut up, dude. Yeah, you, you're driving. Yeah, you can't do one. I wanted you. I wanted to see if you wanted to do one. Um, Evelyn, you want to do one? Yeah, you ain't driving. Is Jay driving? Oh, it's mom is driving. His mom is driving. Oh yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How did you do that? All right. Hey, I'll try one. I might get it wrong, but I'll try it. Okay. I mean, so can you transfer? I go next too. Can you? Oh, no, I'll let, let you go ahead. You go ahead. What? <laughs> I said I go next. Can you transfer it to Bree? <laughs> can you transfer host to uh to Bree to Laddie? Already. So I have to change it to you already, Tom. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. I didn't even get back to the meeting. Okay, there it is. Mm. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. I swear. <laughs> Y'all, y'all pick some colors, but what, what, what are y'all trying to prove? It's just for our eyes. What we like? Okay, let them out. Okay, so then let me do. Yes, you can. Okay, so we can do. Let's do audio view. I don't do this. Can we not use a JPY pair? Okay, why well, don't use JPY? Because the zones are going to be so cramped. They're all going to have short ranges. Okay, well, what pair do you want me to break down? Uh, I mean, some, uh, something that's not JPY. That's JPY. Um, yeah. But we already know the euros are going to be doing the same thing. So we can do uh, GBP. NZD, USD. Um, NZD USD, let's do that. EUR Chef. Okay. Chef. NZD, we can do NZD. So we're going to go to the monthly and frame the order block. Now, this month isn't finished. This month isn't finished. So I would be framing this. So I would do it here. You'll be framing what? Hold on. I'm trying to move the zoom so I can get to my tools. Okay. This is the first order block. 
that I see. I would disagree. Oh, I see it. Okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, and then. So I did have a question. This would you consider this an order pod? Because I was watching the video and they said these were uh, order pods. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, I know other people. Yeah, the wrong class. That's Savannah's class. Okay. <laughs> so, so I don't see any order blocks within the monthly. Okay. So I'll go down to the weekly. And look for a weekly. Um, let me see. Hold on. Can I ask a question real quick. What's up, Elfie? So if you don't see a bottom order black, don't you go to the left to find one? You you do, Elfie. Um, it's just so far, it's so far in the past. Okay. I'm not I'm not even sure. Okay. So I didn't see any on the monthly, so now I'm gonna go to the weekly and find you, the one. Normally you would you would go further back, like you would look further back. But it, it's cool. Just oh. look for the weekly. It's it's wait, wait, wait. What, what what was it? You would just look, you would press over, like you would you would try to find it somewhere further to the left. Oh, first said you want me to go look for it to the no, left. I want you to go to the weekly. I want you to go. I to mean, weekly. yeah, okay. there it is right there. Yeah, it's right here. I know, so. but it is so far down. That's why I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Oops, I don't know why I keep doing that. So I'm gonna go to the weekly and look for another order block. I would be tempted to use this one because this is an order block. You don't use these. Well, so then on, the wrong class. Savannah's class is a. Okay, so I go to the daily. I go to the daily. Wow, you can you can you can go over though and find the weekly. Just uh, like go over some weekly. more. But why wouldn't you? Did your mark? It's going to be lower than, than that dip in where, where it dipped. You see where the market right. is? I guess you can use this. It, did, it, did the market go below that? No. Okay, we'll draw it up. Oh, did it? It's like right there. It looks like the market is in it. It is. Draw it up. Okay. Thank you. I go to the daily and I see an order block here. So with that being said, and there's no, so I would just look for this pair to do to this order block to tap in to take it back down. What's the range? Right? What is it? What do you mean? What's the trading range? Oh, okay. So I would probably want to get in right here. You're saying probably. I I, I need. I would get in. I would. I would enter this trade. I want you to, but how, how you're going to enter the trade off your naked eye? I mean, how are you going to get the trade? Well, because I know. Okay, so if I break it down, I use the imbalance. I use the imbalance. Where's the imbalance? I mean, not the imbalance, but the golden zone. Well, this is, but this is the weekly. This is the daily. That was the wait, go back. You're still going to do it on the daily. Okay. Why do I keep wanting to push this? I'm glad you cleaned that imbalance thing up. Yeah. <laughs> Fib does not show you that. Hush, okay, hush, we got over that. Let me see, okay. So I'm gonna take it from, yeah, from the top to the bottom, which is where I had my entry at anyway. 
That's where you had your entry. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 you would take that. How how far down would you take that trade? To the next order block. I would take it right here to this order block. To equal lows. Yeah. Well, so it's the equal low, which happened to so, be the order so block. So what, what's your pip count? Well, about 100, 100 pips. 105 pips. Okay. So I, I was trying to set you up with this, but um, I, what's going on? What's going on with this market? Go back to the like scroll, press out so we can see some candles. There you go. Okay, the market has already hit this zone, right? Mm -hmm. it reacted to that weekly zone. Mm -hmm. Is the market pressing down or is it going to go up? Like, are, are there fundamental reasons why the, the NZD is going down against the dollar? Well, the USD is supposed to... It's supposed to raise interest rates. Yeah, so it's, that's going to push the USD so up. As part of your analysis, you have to understand that this market is probably going to push down um, for the longer term. So in this case, you probably want to find an area lower than that. Let's say you get this trade and it, and it busts right through that order block. It already ran into the order block once. Let's say this time it busts through it. Where is it going? Where, where is your next area? Mm. Squeeze, squeeze it back together. I, this is not complicated it's just your next area of lows right there you, you see those lows together yeah not i mean you got to go up a little bit go up around 6400 there you, there you go 6400 you just if you're in this trade you don't want to cut your your winners off right you want to mm -hmm. if so let's say you're watching this trade and it's approaching your take profit you remove your take profit because if it keeps going you just want to have you want to um, find your next area where you think this could react, and all you're doing is looking to the left to find your next level of equal lows. Okay, um, when people trade smart money, they normally partial out at the first uh, level of equal lows, right? They'll partial out, meaning they'll they'll take out whatever their risk percentage is, and they'll let the rest of the trade run. Okay. And as it passes through these levels, then you can put up your stop loss at the level after it passes through. And if it comes back and hits your stop loss, then, then you didn't lose anything. But if it keeps going to your next level, then you've gained another X number of percent, you know, on this trade. So because we just got a bounce off of that level, I think that it could probably push right through there. Um, I think there are good fundamentals behind why uh, the NZD is dropping like that versus the dollar. Um, keep in mind, I think next week we have some, uh, we have a meeting, a financial meeting next week. Normally we, the U.S. has news every week. Um, and as long as the news is positive, like NFP ended up being positive, even though uh, I, uh, a lot of reporters were saying that the jobs number was going to be off, but it was positive news. So I think if all things are, say the same, that this is going to probably keep pressing down. And I think as a trader, it would be beneficial for, for you or me or whoever's in this trade to kind of anticipate these things, you know, and have in our mind how we're going to play our next move, okay? You can partial out right there at those equal lows, but then you can try to allow the rest of the trade to continue, continue to work for you um, at no risk. Um, do I have any questions on it? Okay, I, I, we, we have to discuss, man, we have to discuss risk management because um, I get the, the feeling that people don't understand risk management, okay? And the reason why I say that is because I've had a few comments that, uh, you know, like I can't, Somebody, somebody told me they couldn't use a, a five a five point zero in a in a twenty thousand dollar account. Or they couldn't use a certain lot size in a in a certain account. That's not how it works, people. 
It doesn't, doesn't matter what your account is, okay? That's not what determines your lot size. Um, your stop loss is what determines your lot size. And if you're always risking, I risk 1%, you know, uh, I trade a funded account. I risk 1% per trade. Some of you guys risk 2%. So it depends on what you're risking, right? Uh, and it, you, you take your risk, whether that's 1% for me is 500 bucks, right? $50,000 account, 1% is 500 bucks. If my stop loss is 15 pips, I take 500 divided by 15, and that is my lot size, right? I move the decimal over one, one spot to the left. That's my lot size. I roll with it. So if that lot size is a 30, that's a 30, right? So don't say you can't use this lot size based off the size of your account because that's not how it works. Um, if you don't understand how to calculate your lot size, if you don't understand how, how risk management works, sidebar me or, you know, DM me or DM somebody uh, who, who understands how that works. Because the worst thing that you can do is shortchange yourself. If you're going to assume the risk of a trade, you want to get the maximum out of that trade. I mean, don't just say, okay, I use a, a 0.25 every time. No, I mean, you're wasting your time, right? You're, you're, you're throwing money away. Because if the trade goes to where you think it's going to go, and nine times out of 10 is going to go where you think it's going to go, then why are you wasting, wasting money when you should be using a 1.0 lot size because your stop loss was small? So that's what, if you don't understand your risk, man, I mean, you're in the wrong game. This is all about risk reward. Trading is all about risk reward. So if you don't understand that basic concept, then you need to stop whatever you're doing. Don't take any trades and figure out risk reward because without risk management, you're always one trade away from losing, losing everything, from blowing your account. Risk management is everything, okay? Another thing, some of you guys might be trading an account. Um, let's say I say risk 1% and then your lot size ends up being a 10.0, but you're not comfortable with those numbers. It's okay to risk less, okay? It's okay to risk less, but just understand that, that that's you risking less because your psychology is jacked up, okay? Work on your psychology. Um, maybe you're trading an account that's too big. You're not ready to trade that $50,000 account. Maybe you need to go trade a $10,000 account. But the point is, um, we, we should all be, uh, I guess, setting our lot sizes off of the risk management piece, okay? And if you're not doing that, you are hurting yourself. And, and you're always putting yourself, you know, in danger of blowing your account. So just understand that use risk management to, to determine your lot size. It's okay if you back off of that lot size, okay? And if you're trading a personal account, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trading a funded account, um, maybe you need to, to drop down uh, in size, in the size of your, of your funded account because you're out there, you know, uh, making the trades, but you're not comfortable with the numbers that are running up. Like if you go and draw down, maybe that drawdown number, even though it's within that 1%, maybe it's higher than you used to seeing, okay? That's going to happen sometimes. Sometimes you're going to go and draw down and you might go and draw down half of that 1% and that number might be astronomical, if you, especially if you have a, a bigger account. But you can't worry about that. I mean, just trust your analysis. And once you do this several times, then you'll understand that, that your analysis is probably going to be spot on and the trade will eventually turn around. You know, just like when we were in that GA trade, I never panicked. I mean, I was down um, just like you guys were. But, you know, the difference is I knew I had just made 2,600. So I didn't sweat it. Plus, I, I was comfortable with, with knowing that the trade was going to turn around, and it eventually did. So NFP week is probably um, the hardest week to, uh, to make money because of all of the news events. But um, I think most of us, are, we're, we're all positive, right? I think most people made money NFP week. That's a, that's a big deal. So every other week, 
man, I mean, y'all should make a lot more money because the news events aren't going to be there. And as a swing trader, uh, news is going to push my trade in a direction, but the charts don't lie. It's still going to go back to, to those order blocks, right? It's still going to go the direction that the order blocks say they're going to go. And a lot of times the order blocks will set the direction and the news will just carry you along the way. Um, so don't be uh, so anxious or, or don't take Lambo lot sizes trying to get to a, a financial goal. Just follow um, follow the instruction. Every, every Monday, every Sunday, Monday, we should all be in for a payday just based off retracement. That's easy money. That's the money that we don't, we don't have to do it. Framing and, and, and analyzing order blocks. We just retracing that kind of and getting paid. Those are easy money trades. So if that's where you want to live for a while, if you just want to live off those retracements, be my guest. That's easy money. Some people will never learn anything else about the market just doing that. Yes, you can do that right now. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Even if you don't understand the order block aspect, if you don't understand how to recognize the order block, if you don't understand how to wait for the order block to pick you up, if you don't understand any of that, you can be a wildly successful trader just by going to the weekly chart every weekend, putting a fib on that candle and trading it to, that, to, to your fib zone. You can be wildly successful. I guarantee you, you will win more than three out of 10 trades. How many trades did we look at, um, Selena? Me, me, you, and Felicia, how many trades did we look at? Five. How many of them went to where we thought they were going to go? All of them. All of them. All of them. 500 pips right there, man. Like, you're, you're, you're going to make money just by trading. It was 708 pips. 708 pips, y'all. How many of y'all made 700 pips last week? I'll wait. Y'all let me know. 700 mm -hmm. pips. Anybody. You'll be wildly successful. So... All I'm telling you is there, there is more than one way to skin a cat. You know, um, I call that cheating. That's cheating. I want my son, I want my son to know the market. I don't want him to cheat like that. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It's, but what I'm saying is there, there are baby steps. Um, and that's an easy baby step. And you can be wildly successful doing that until you learn the order blocks. Because once you learn the order blocks, now you don't just trade the retracement. Now you trade the actual move, right? So now you double and triple that. Um, you guys have any questions? And Lamisha, you can you can uh, you can DM me, and uh, if you if you want to do like a one on one or whatever, and I can. I can show you just that, you know, the same way I did a few other people. I can show you just that, or you can send me your charts or post. This is what I encourage everybody. Don't just send me the stuff, okay? Post your chart ideas. If you trade in currency pairs, post them in the currency photo. So everybody can benefit from that analysis, okay? All of us are in here to make money. And this is 100% free, guys. This is free, 100% free. So I, I beg you guys to put your trade ideas out there. And we're not going to say all that stupid. That's, I'm going to tell you, it's one of me and it's 30 of you guys. Alicia knows how to do it. <laughs> Dez know how to do it. Uh, you know, Brianna know how to do it. Yo, put your trade ideas out there. Everybody would give you feedback, Right. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to eat this week. This week. There's no reason why we all shouldn't win. All of us should be able to count several hundred pips. And I'm not, it's not a pip race. And it's not a, that's not what I'm talking about. If, if even if it's 30 pips, if you make 30 bucks, if you make $25, it's making money. And that's going to give you confidence to go in next week and then go in next week. And you just keep going. And as your confidence builds, now you're replacing your gas money. Now you're replacing your electric bill, your mortgage, your car note, your job, you know, that's how it works. 
And, and I'm not telling you guys anything that I, I don't know. I do this. I post my results. I haven't made less than five grand in a long time, in a week. That's doctor money, man. I don't, I, I'm not a doctor. So it's possible. I, I don't have an advanced degree. I went to college at DeVry. <laughs> you know, I didn't study economics. I study YouTube. Everything I know I got off YouTube. I watch videos. I post the same videos. Y'all don't even have to do the research. I do it and drop it in there. How many of you guys have looked at the links that any of the ladies posted in education? Rhetorical question. But how many people have looked at those? Those are invaluable, man. ICT, we've all mentioned him. That guy is uncanny. Yeah, he talks a lot. He's long-winded. But the stuff that he brings out, man, you can't find anywhere. I don't know how that guy knows that stuff. But it works. He he charges for, for mentorships. You can't, you have a waiting list. You might be waiting two years to get mentored by ICC. But he posts all his videos. If you follow his page right now, the 2022 membership is ICC mentorship is on his page. And the same concepts that I'm telling you, he talks about the same things. I got everything from him. So I, I encourage you guys to read the information and, and, and just be involved, man. You're going to make money. Just be involved. You guys got anything else? I got to check out. Hey, um, so my, my, my brother does something in, uh, in crypto that involves nodes. It's kind of like an investment thing. I'm going to let him do... Uh, a presentation, even if it's not live, you know, I'll post it, but it's, it's more along the lines of uh, you invest in a, uh, in a coin or, or a project is what, it, that's what he calls it. And you buy a node and you buy these 10 coins and let's say the 10 coins are 17 bucks a piece. So you buy 10 of them, it's $170. You get paid every day, like a 10th of that coin. So it, it's the price of the coin fluctuates. So the price of your payment fluctuates. But over the course of about three months, you get your money back. And then everything after that is all profit. So I don't know. Um, I don't know it like he does. Just like I do Forex, he's into the to the to the uh, to the Bitcoin stuff. But between us both, we're gonna make this money. So I'm gonna let him do a presentation. Y'all look at it, see what you think. Um, it's another way to uh, to get paid, and it's another way to have passive income. All right, it's another iron in the fire, if nothing else. So look look forward to that. Um, it probably it probably won't be this week because I I'm going to be down here in uh, West Texas for a minute, and um, my brother's going back to to New Mexico, but um we, we'll get it to you, but. Uh, just be patient on it and just ask about it if, if I haven't posted it in the next two weeks. And if you guys don't have anything else for me, I got the roll, man. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Okay, thank you. And Dan, thank you. Thank you. Doing stock stuff. Thank you. Hey, this hey, is Alicia, awesome. Alicia, are you doing the stock stuff? Yeah. Um, Terrence also. Okay. Um, so I, Des is asking who's doing it. So I, I think as she gets the information, I think she'll post it. Right, right, Alicia? I don't know about Des. Um, I haven't talked to her about it, but yeah, no. I will. She, she's asking, Des is asking who's doing it. Oh. oh she's asking everybody who, who's interested. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. But there's a there's a stock page. Only thing I know about stocks is Google split in 20 to 1. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys hey, I, I appreciate everybody um please drop your your charts this week so we can all eat thank you all right y'all have a good one bye thank you Todd. all right